we're going to go to a new blank sheet in ArtCam and we're going to import a very large piece that we're going to machine. We're going to have to machine it in pieces because it's too big for the CNC machine. Now if you notice this model, we have a ruler up at the top. This piece is actually 96 inches by 96 inches. This is another 8 foot part. What I'm going to do is use ArtCam's ClipArt library to import a 3D piece. All these gold pictures you see down the side are 3D pieces that we can use inside of ArtCam. There's different, different categories. We have animals. And all of these, there's over 400 of these. You can import these into ArtCam and do whatever you want. They're all 3D pieces free for you to use however you see fit. Architectural is another section. So you could import them, you could bring these onto existing designs, or you could machine these as they are on their own. So you can see all the different sections here, fantasy, greenery, which would include trees, leaves, flowers, objects, people. What we're going to work with are the masks. I'm going to choose a mask, and I'm going to select and make this mask bigger just interactively dragging it here, making it into a bigger size. And let's take a look. Right now it's 89 inches tall by 26 inches thick in the Z. Let's change that to 25 just so we have a nice even number. So now this piece is 25 inches thick. Let's take a look at the finished 3D mask we've loaded in. So this is one of those clip art pieces. What we're going to do with this piece is we need to fit it on our machine. So we have a tool that will automatically slice it in the Z for you. So it's going to come across like this and it'll slice up the part so that we can machine each piece separately and then you can stack it up and glue it together when you're finished. Now before we do that, let's make a few alterations to this model. You'll notice there are some areas that could be smoothed out and we can actually do a general smoothing over the whole thing fairly quickly. We have our smoothing tool here which I can set up to smooth the whole model and it'll help get rid of some of the very small ridges across this piece. Now next we have some other pieces maybe on the face that we can sculpt out using our smoothing sculpting tool. We also have, you notice here, a small hole. There's a few of those that we can use the sculpting tool to fix as well and we have a couple maybe sharp edges that would be good to get rid of before machining. So let's start with our smoothing tool. So if we set up our tool, again you see that black cursor represents the area that we're going to smooth. All I do is hold my mouse down and scroll start sculpting over the areas that I want to smooth out. Perhaps this bump on the forehead would be a good one to get rid of. For smaller areas like this little crease, we have a special option called Raise Only. Let's also decrease the diameter size here and we'll zoom in to the little hole. So the little hole there, with that raise only, when I smooth over it, it actually will fill that hole in for me. As you can see the hole there slowly filling in. And then let's also take a look at that sharp edge. To fix that, I just go back into my sculpting. I'm going to go back to a regular sculpting here. And we run the cursor over the edge and that's going to reduce the sharpness of that one specific spot without altering the sharpness of any of the other detail along the face that I would like to keep. So here's our face so far. He's looking pretty good. Now there's another sculpting tool I just want to very quickly show you. It's the smudge. This is the one that allows you to work with your model as if it were clay in front of you. With the smudge tool, I can actually completely remodel this piece. So if I open up the smudge, I can use this for example if I wanted to try to make this model look a little maybe happier. I'm going to rearrange the cheeks. So the smudge will allow me to push and pull it as if it were clay. So I'm just grabbing and pushing up my model, changing how it looks.
And we can also take this bump in the forehead and I can grab it and push it forward, softening the look of the mask. So now he has a bit of a merrier look. The nice thing too, if you don't like your changes, you can always undo them. And what this will do is bring you back slowly, step by step, to where you were before. So let's take a look at the Z-slicing now. With the Z-slicing, what I can do is actually take my model and, like I said, we're going to slice it down so that we have parts that will actually fit on our machine. So this is a really thick part. It's 25 inches thick. Now, most CNC machines, your average CNC machine, will have about an 8-inch eight eight inch thickness uh, clearance on it. Now, once you get your tooling in there, you reduce that thickness. Let's say we have about 5 inches. Okay, so say we're buying 5-inch thick foam. This could be precision board, sign board, whatever you use. So it's 5 inches. That's the thickness we have to work with. What we're going to do is use our slicing tool. The slicing tool, all I have to do is enter in the thickness per slice. In this case, we're going to use 5 inches. I enter in 5, I click Slice Relief, and it does all the math for me. All the calculations, all the work, it does everything. It's already done. So if we take a look at the slices, it's taken our piece, our original piece is still there as it was. Let's take a look at slice 1. So here's slice 1. Slice 1 is exactly 5 inches thick. No thicker, no thinner. I can machine this piece and set it aside. You put your new piece of foam onto the board and you machine slice 2. Let's take a look at slice 3. Slice 4 and the last slice, slice 5, which is all that's left is the nose. Another thing you could do to help you later on is you could put maybe two dowel holes, which will uh, help you align the part. So once you've machined all these slices, you have your dowel holes, you align them up, you put glue in there, you stack the whole piece up, and your finished results will look exactly like the original mask before you sliced it. So we've been able to see a few things in this, in this demonstration. The first file that we looked at was a rabbit. The rabbit, we were able to show you how we can take colors. They could be colors, it could be line work as well. And you can take each part and you can emboss it and make a 3D relief from any of your 2D designs. We also took and made a 3D texture right from a picture, from an image. Next, we looked at how we can import any type of 3D file and we can set that up for machining. In this case, we did rotary or three fourth axis machining. And then this was the last one we looked at where we had this mask using one of our 3D clip arts that come with the software. And then we used ArtCam to sculpt it, smooth it, smudge it, and lastly to slice it up so that we could fit it onto our machine.